So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've got some slides. I'm probably actually not going to use them. So if I do use them, it means that I've forgotten what I'm going to say. But I'm very passionate, as you heard, um, about music. So I was part of Last FM. And I'm equally, in fact, probably more passionate about art. And one of the weird things about art is that it's effectively, in the online space, it's a blank canvas. So, so let me sort of step back a bit and just talk a little bit about that for a sec. So how many people, just raise your hands quickly, who's listened to music in the last couple of weeks? Good. OK, how many people have been to a gig in the last couple of months? Not bad. OK, next bit. How many people have got pictures on their walls at home? Yeah, that's pretty good. How many people have been to a museum or an exhibition in the last couple of months? Actually, that's really high. OK, that was higher than I expected. So <laughs> that's great. But that's really good. That's, that's, that's good. OK. So anyway, look, so if, you think, so, I, I'm, so if you think about, let's think about books for a sec. Where do you go if you want to look at books? You go to Amazon, right? Think about music, you go to Last FM, or maybe iTunes, or maybe Spotify, or maybe a couple <laughs> of other places like that. Think about movies, you go to IMDb, you go to Netflix, right? Think about people, we've got Kevin, you go to LinkedIn, you've got Facebook. Travel, think about TripAdvisor, you think about Expedia, stuff like that. Where do you go for art? Yeah, you go to the odd museum website, but they're pretty small. And if we get to having to go through the slides, I'll show you them on the slides too. But I'm not going to do that too quickly. Because what I really want to talk about is actually, how do you do things like LinkedIn and Last.fm? What are the, what, how do those things get built? And why hasn't that happened yet for art? And there are, I think, four really, really important components to how you build those sorts of things. The first thing is you need to have a community, and you need to have the ability for people to build a social profile. And the reason why social profiles are so important is because actually, one of the things which gets anything working on the internet is people boasting, or people being able to date, or people being able to find stuff, or do other things with it. And you really need a social profile to do that. But to build a social profile around, say, music, you need a massive great catalog. Or, for example, for art, you need the same thing. So let me sort of put this quickly in context for you. Lots of people here have probably got Facebook pages. One of the interesting things about Facebook pages is people show off who they are by sticking up the books they're reading, the movies they're watching, the music they're listening to. Wouldn't it be really nice if you could also show the art you've just seen, or the art you've just seen in someone's house, or you're going to go and see, or stuff like that? So why is it that that sort of stuff is really difficult to do? Why hasn't anybody pulled together that whole catalog? Just as a quick aside on that, I did work at Amazon. I actually did the hard stuff inside Amazon. And, and that, it's called hard lines. It's software, video games, electronics. But it's not called hard lines because they're hard physical objects. It's because they're hard to build a catalog. The reason why Amazon started with books was actually ISBNs. So that's the second big problem about art. Why hasn't anyone built a website where there's lots and lots and lots of art that you can sort of pull together and enjoy and have? And then the third thing that all these great websites have got is they've all got the ability to find and discover and get recommendations. And I'm using those words quite carefully. So the thing about finding stuff is that one angle of that is you need to be able to search for stuff. So to be able to search for stuff, it's easy with books. You just type in the author's name or the title. It's really easy if you want to do it for music too. You just type in the lyrics. Now think about art. Think about a picture that you really like, and then think about how you're going to find it on the internet. It's pretty difficult, isn't it? It's really pretty difficult. But actually, it's not. It's going to be really, really simple. There's been some technology out there for quite some time, which is called image recognition. The problem is we've never had any technology which can use it, which is in your pocket, until these things came along. Because these things are great. They've got cameras in them. So wouldn't, you know how Shazam works? Wouldn't it be really great if we also had a device which you could point at a picture, and then you could find all about it, and you could almost use it as like a device to share it with other people? The final bit, though, the real killer bit as to why art has had a hard time online is art's a bit like, if, if you think about art, it's great as a live experience. Digitally, it's been much more difficult. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. One of them, though, is it's really difficult to appreciate art in a digital environment on a PC. You can do it. You can certainly collect it. You can find out more about it. But think about the experience of actually looking at art or the experience of looking at a postcard or even looking at a great catalog. They spend a huge amount of time trying to get all the color stuff right. So what happens fantastically well in the new digital environment is the thing that Mr. Jobs has just invented, this thing, the iPad. It's designed to show you pictures. So if I want to talk to you about, if I want to tell you about a fantastic, does that mean that I'm done with time? OK, so, so just quickly then. So one last thing. If I want to tell you about something called 
the group of seven, who are a fantastic group of Canadian painters. I can go blue in the face until I've managed to describe them to you, and it's not really going to work. It's a bit like if I told you about a piece of music, if I can't get you to listen to it, you're not going to go to the concert, you're not going to buy the CD. The great thing about these devices is they change it. We can actually show you in really great color what these paintings look like. If you can give artists those tools, they're actually going to have a device they've never had before. They're going to have the ability to actually start marketing their stuff. And then that will encourage people to be able to sort of digitize and see art in a completely different light and get people enthused. And you get all the wonderful benefits you already have from the stuff like Last FM, but applying to art too. So thank you very much.